India. S telecommunication network is the second largest in the world by number of telephone users, both fixed and mobile phone, with 1.179 billion subscribers as on the 31st of July 2018. It has one of the lowest call tariffs in the world, enabled by mega telecom operators and hyper competition among them. As on the 31st of July 2018, India has the world. S second largest internet user base with 460.24 million broadband internet subscribers in the country. Major sectors of the Indian telecommunication industry are telephone, internet and television broadcast industry in the country which is in an ongoing process of transforming into next generation network. Employs an extensive system of modern network elements such as digital telephone exchanges, mobile switching centers, media gateways and signaling gateways at the core, interconnected by a wide variety of transmission systems using fiber optics or microwave radio relay networks. The access network, which connects the subscriber to the core, is highly diversified with different copper pair, optic fiber and wireless technologies. DTH, a relatively new broadcasting technology has attained significant popularity in the television segment. The introduction of private FM has given a fillip to the radio broadcasting in India. Telecommunication in India has greatly been supported by the INSAT system of the country, one of the largest domestic satellite systems in the world. India possesses a diversified communication system, which links all parts of the country by telephone, internet, radio, television, and satellite. Indian telecom industry underwent a high pace of market liberalization and growth since the 1990s and now has become the world's most competitive and one of the fastest growing telecom markets. The industry has grown over 20 times in just 10 years, from under 37 million subscribers in the year 2001 to over 846 million subscribers in the year 2011. India has the world's second largest mobile phone user base with over 1,157.04 million users as of July 2018. Telecommunication has supported the socio-economic development of India and has played a significant role to narrow down the rural-urban digital divide to some extent. It also has helped to increase the transparency of governance with the introduction of e-governance in India. The government has pragmatically used modern telecommunication facilities to deliver mass education programs for the rural folk of India. According to London based telecom trade body GSMA, the telecom sector accounted for 6.5% of India's GDP in 2015, or about 9 lakh rupees crore, $130 billion, and supported direct employment for 2.2 million people in the country. GSMA estimates that the Indian telecom sector will contribute 14.5 lakh rupees crore, 200 billion dollars to the economy and support 3 million direct jobs and 2 million indirect jobs by 2020. Topic: History. Topic: Topic: The beginning. Topic. Telecommunications in India began with the introduction of the telegraph. The Indian postal and telecom sectors are one of the world's oldest. In 1850, the first experimental electric telegraph line was started between Calcutta and Diamond Harbour. In 1851, it was opened for the use of the British East India Company. The Posts and Telegraphs Department occupied a small corner of the Public Works Department, at that time. The construction of 4,000 miles 6, kilometers of telegraph lines was started in November 1853. These connected Kolkata then Calcutta and Peshawar in the north, Agra, Mumbai then Bombay through Sindhwa Ghats, and Chennai then Madras in the south, Odakamand and Bangalore. William O'Shaughnessy, who pioneered the telegraph and telephone in India, belonged to the Public Works Department, and worked towards the development of telecom throughout this period. A separate department was opened in 1854 when telegraph facilities were opened to the public. In 1880, two telephone companies namely the Oriental Telephone Company Limited and the Anglo-Indian Telephone Company Limited approached the Government of India to establish telephone exchange in India. The permission was refused on the grounds that the establishment of telephones was a government monopoly and that the government itself would undertake the work. 
In 1881, the government later reversed its earlier decision and a license was granted to the Oriental Telephone Company Limited of England for opening telephone exchanges at Calcutta, Bombay, Madras and Ahmedabad and the first formal telephone service was established in the country. On 28 January 1882, Major East Baring, member of the Governor-General of India's Council declared open the telephone exchanges in Calcutta, Bombay and Madras. The exchange in Calcutta named the Central Exchange had a total of 93 subscribers in its early stage. Later that year, Bombay also witnessed the opening of a telephone exchange. Topic further developments and milestones Topic Pre-1902 Cable Telegraph 1902 First wireless telegraph station established between Sagar Island and Sanhed. 1907 First central battery of telephones introduced in Kanpur. 1913-1914 First automatic exchange installed in Shimla. 1927 Radio telegraph system between the UK and India, with Imperial wireless chain beam stations at Kadki and Dond. Inaugurated by Lord Irwin on 23 July by exchanging greetings with King George V 1933 radio telephone system inaugurated between the UK and India. 1953-12 channel carrier system introduced. 1960 first subscriber trunk dialing route commissioned between Lucknow and Kanpur. 1975 first PCM system commissioned between Mumbai City and Inderi telephone exchanges. 1976 – First digital microwave junction. 1979 – First optical fiber system for local junction commissioned at Pune. 1980 – First satellite earth station for domestic communications established at Sikhandarabad, UP. 1983 – First analog stored program control exchange for trunk lines commissioned at Mumbai. 1984 – C.DOT established for indigenous development and production of digital exchanges. 1995 – First mobile telephone service started on non-commercial basis on 15 August 1995 in Delhi. 1995 – Internet introduced in India starting with Laxmi Nagar, Delhi 15 August 1995 – Development of broadcasting – Radio broadcasting was initiated in 1927 but became state responsibility only in 1930. In 1937 it was given the name All India Radio and since 1957 it has been called Akashvana. Limited duration of television programming began in 1959, and complete broadcasting followed in 1965. The Ministry of Information and Broadcasting owned and maintained the audiovisual apparatus, including the television channel Doordarshan, in the country prior to the economic reforms of 1991. In 1997, an autonomous body was established in the name of Prasar Bharti to take care of the public service broadcasting under the Prasar Bharti Act. All India Radio and Doordarshan, which earlier were working as media units under the Ministry of I&B became constituents of the body, pre-liberalisation statistics, while all the major cities and towns in the country were linked with telephones during the British period, the total number of telephones in 1948 numbered only around 80,000. Post-independence, growth remained slow because the telephone was seen more as a status symbol rather than being an instrument of utility. The number of telephones grew leisurely to 980,000 in 1971, 2.15 million in 1981 and 5.07 million in 1991, the year economic reforms were initiated in the country. Topic liberalization and privatization Topic Liberalization of Indian telecommunication in industry started in 1981 when Prime Minister Indira Gandhi signed contracts with Alcatel CIT of France to merge with the state-owned telecom company ITI, in an effort to set up 5 million lines per year. But soon the policy was let down because of political opposition. Attempts to liberalize the telecommunication industry were continued by the following government under the Prime Ministership of Rajiv Gandhi. He invited Sam Petroda, a U.S.-based non-resident Indian NRI and a former Rockwell International executive to set up a Center for Development of Telematics which manufactured electronic telephone exchanges in India for the first time. Sam Petroda had a significant role as a consultant and advisor in the development of telecommunication in India. In 1985, the Department of Telecom was separated from Indian Post and Telecommunication Department. 
DOT was responsible for telecom services in entire country until 1986 when Mahanagar Telephone Nigam Limited and Videsh Sanchar Nigam Limited were carved out of DOT to run the telecom services of metro cities Delhi and, Mumbai and international long distance operations respectively. The demand for telephones was ever increasing, and in the 1990s, Indian government was under increasing pressure to open up the telecom sector for private investment as a part of liberalization privatization globalization policies that the government had to accept to overcome the severe fiscal crisis and resultant balance of payments issue in 1991. Consequently, private investment in the sector of value-added services VAS was allowed and cellular telecom sector were opened up for competition from private investments. It was during this period that the Narsimha Rao-led government introduced the National Telecommunications Policy in 1994 which brought changes in the following areas, ownership, service and regulation of telecommunications infrastructure. The policy introduced the concept of telecommunication for all and its vision was to expand the telecommunication facilities to all the villages in India. Liberalization in the basic telecom sector was also envisaged in this policy. They were also successful in establishing joint ventures between state-owned telecom companies and international players. Foreign firms were eligible to 49% of the total stake. The multinationals were just involved in technology transfer, and not policy making. During this period, the World Bank and ITU had advised the Indian government to liberalize long-distance services to release the monopoly of the state-owned DOT and VSNL and to enable competition in the long-distance carrier business which would help reduce tariffs and better the economy of the country. The Rao-run government instead liberalized the local services, taking the opposite political parties into confidence and assuring foreign involvement in the long-distance business after five years. The country was divided into 20 telecommunication circles for basic telephony and 18 circles for mobile services. These circles were divided into category A, B and C depending on the value of the revenue in each circle. The government threw open the bids to one private company per circle along with government-owned DOT per circle. For cellular service two service providers were allowed per circle and a 15 years license was given to each provider. During all these improvements, the government did face oppositions from ITI, DOT, MTNL, VSNL and other labor unions, but they managed to keep away from all the hurdles. In 1997, the government set up TRI Telecom Regulatory Authority of India which reduced the interference of government in deciding tariffs and policy making. The political powers changed in 1999 and the new government under the leadership of Adil Bihari Vajpayee was more pro-reforms and introduced better liberalization policies. In 2000, the Vajpayee government constituted the Telecom Disputes Settlement and Appellate Tribunal TDSAT through an amendment of the TRI Act, 1997. The primary objective of TDSAT's establishment was to release TRI from adjudicatory and dispute settlement functions in order to strengthen the regulatory framework. Any dispute involving parties like licensor, licensee, service provider and consumers are resolved by TDSAT. Moreover, any direction, order or decision of TRI can be challenged by appealing in TDSAT. The government corporatized the operations wing of DOT on 1 October 2000 and named it as Department of Telecommunication Services DTS, which was later named as Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited BSNL. The proposal of raising the stake of foreign investors from 49% to 74% was rejected by the opposite political parties and leftist thinkers. Domestic business groups wanted the government to privatize VSNL. Finally in April 2002, the government decided to cut its stake of 53% to 26% in VSNL and to throw it open for sale to private enterprises. Tata finally took 25% stake in VSNL, this was a gateway to many foreign investors to get entry into the Indian telecom markets. After March 2000, the government became more liberal in making policies and issuing licenses to private operators. The government further reduced license fees for cellular service providers and increased the allowable stake to 74% for foreign companies. Because of all these factors, the service fees finally reduced and the call costs were cut greatly enabling every common middle class family in India to afford a cell phone. Nearly 32 million handsets were sold in India. The data reveals the real potential for growth of the Indian mobile market. 
Many private operators, such as Reliance Communications, Geo, Tata Indicom, Vodafone, Loop Mobile, Airtel, Idea etc., successfully entered the high-potential Indian telecom market. In the initial five to six years the average monthly subscribers' additions were around 0.05 to 0.1 million only and the total mobile subscribers' base in December 2002 stood at 10.5 million. However, after a number of proactive initiatives taken by regulators and licensors, the total number of mobile subscribers has increased rapidly to over 929 million subscribers as of May 2012. In March 2008, the total GSM and CDMA mobile subscriber base in the country was 375 million, which represented a nearly 50% growth when compared with previous year. As the unbranded Chinese cell phones which do not have International Mobile Equipment Identity numbers pose a serious security risk to the country, mobile network operators therefore suspended the usage of around 30 million mobile phones about 8% of all mobiles in the country by 30 April 2009. Phones without valid IMEI cannot be connected to cellular operators. India has opted for the use of both the GSM Global System for Mobile Communications and CDMA Code Division Multiple Access technologies in the mobile sector. In addition to landline and mobile phones, some of the companies also provide the WLL service. The mobile tariffs in India have also become the lowest in the world. A new mobile connection can be activated with a monthly commitment of 15 cents only. Topic license cancellation Topic On 2 February 2012 the Supreme Court ruled on petitions filed by Subramanian Swami and the Center for Public Interest Litigation CPIL, represented by Prashant Bhushan, challenging the 2008 allotment of 2G licenses, cancelling all 122 spectrum licenses granted during A. Raja Minister of Communications and IT from 2007 to 2009, the primary official accused's term as Communications Minister, and described the allocation of 2G spectrum as unconstitutional and arbitrary. The bench of G.S. Singhvi and A.S.O.K. Kumar Ganguly imposed a fine of 50 million rupees $700,000 on Unitech Wireless, Swan Telecom and Tata Teleservices and a 5 million rupees $70,000 fine on Loop Telecom, Estel, Allianz Infratech and Sistema Shyam Tele Services. According to the ruling the then granted licenses would remain in place for four months, after which time the government would reissue the licenses. Topic consolidation Topic Post starting of the commercial operation of Reliance Geo in September 2016, the telecom market saw a huge change in terms of falling tariff rates and reduction of data charges, which changed the economics for some of the telecom players. This resulted in exit of many smaller players from the market. Players like Videocon and Sistema sold their Spectrum under Spectrum trading agreements to Airtel and RCOM respectively in Q4 2016. On 23 February 2017, Telenor India announced that Bharti Airtel will take over all its business and assets in India and deal will be completed in 12 months timeframe. On 12 October 2017, Bharti Airtel announced that it would acquire the consumer mobile businesses of Tata Teleservices Limited TTSL and Tata Teleservices Maharashtra Limited TTML in a debt-free cash-free deal. The deal will essentially be free for Airtel which will only incur TTSL's unpaid spectrum payment liability. TTSL will continue to operate its enterprise, fixed line and broadband businesses and its stake in tower company VIOM Networks. Reliance Communications had to shut down its 2G and 3G services, including all voice services, and only offer 4G data services from December 29, 2017, as a result of debt and a failed merger with Aircel. Surprisingly, the shutdown was shortly after completion of acquisition of MTS India on 31 October 2017 Aircel shut down its operations in unprofitable circles including, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh West from 30 January 2018. Aircel along with its units, Aircel Cellular and Dishnet Wireless, on 1 March 2018, filed for bankruptcy in the National Companies Law Tribunal NCLT in Mumbai due to huge competition and high levels of debt. On 14 May 2018, Department of Telecom approved the merger of Telenor India with Bharti Airtel paving the way for final commercial closing of the merger between the two companies. Telenor India has been acquired by Airtel almost without any cost. 
Vodafone and Idea Cellular completed their merger on 31 August 2018, and the merged entity is renamed to Vodafone Idea Limited. The merger created the largest telecom company in India by subscribers and by revenue, and the second largest mobile network in terms of number of subscribers in the world. Under the terms of the deal, the Vodafone Group holds a 45.1% stake in the combined entity, the Aditya Birla Group holds 26% and the remaining shares will be held by the public. However, even after the merger both the brands have been continued to carry their own independent brands. With all this consolidation, the Indian mobile market has turned into three players market with Voda Idea as number one player with revenue market share of 34.7%, Bharti Airtel in second position with revenue market share of 31.7% and RJIO with revenue market share of 22.4%. The GOVT operator BSNL, MTNL is in distant fourth position with approximately market share of 11.2% however RJIO is catching up fast and with its double-digit growth rate, may take over Bharti Ertz revenues in next 12-18 to 18 months time frame. Telephony <inaudible> 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 The telephony segment is dominated by private sector and two state-run businesses. Most companies were formed by a recent revolution and restructuring launched within a decade, directed by Ministry of Communications and IT, Department of Telecommunications and Minister of Finance. Since then, most companies gained 2G, 3G and 4G licenses and engaged fixed-line, mobile and internet business in India. On landlines, intra-circle calls are considered local calls while inter-circle are considered long-distance calls. Foreign direct investment policy which increased the foreign ownership cap from 49% to 100%. The government is working to integrate the whole country in one telecom circle. For long-distance calls, the area code prefixed with a zero is dialed first which is then followed by the number i.e., to call Delhi, 011 would be dialed first followed by the phone number. For international calls, OO must be dialed first followed by the country code, area code and local phone number. The country code for India is 91. Several international fiber optic links include those to Japan, South Korea, Hong Kong, Russia, and Germany. Some major telecom operators in India include the privately owned companies like, Vodafone Idea Airtel, and Reliance Geo and the state-owned companies BSNL and MTNL. Landline Before the new telecom policy was announced in 1999, only the government-owned BSNL and MTNL were allowed to provide landline phone services through copper wire in India with MTNL operating in Delhi and Mumbai and BSNL servicing all other areas of the country. Due to the rapid growth of the cellular phone industry in India, landlines are facing stiff competition from cellular operators, with number of wireline subscribers fell from 37.90 million in December 2008 to 23 million in December 2017. This has forced landline service providers to become more efficient and improve their quality of service. As of July 2018, India has over 22 million wireline customers. Topic. Mobile telephony Topic. In August 1995, then Chief Minister of West Bengal, Jodi Basu made the first mobile phone call in India to then Union Telecom Minister Sukram. Sixteen years later 4G services were launched in Kolkata in 2012, with a subscriber base of more than 1,179.32 million as of July 2018, the mobile telecommunications system in India is the second largest in the world and it was thrown open to private players in the 1990s. GSM was comfortably maintaining its position as the dominant mobile technology with 80% of the mobile subscriber market, but CDMA seemed to have stabilized its market share at 20% for the time being. The country is divided into multiple zones, called circles, roughly along state boundaries. Government and several private players run local and long-distance telephone services. Competition, especially after entry of Reliance Geo, has caused prices to drop across India, which are already one of the cheapest in the world. 
The rates are supposed to go down further with new measures to be taken by the Information Ministry. In September 2004, the number of mobile phone connections crossed the number of fixed line connections and presently dwarfs the wireline segment substantially. The mobile subscriber base has grown from 5 million subscribers in 2001 to over 1,179.32 million subscribers as of July 2018. India primarily follows the GSM mobile system, in the 900 MHz band. Recent operators also operate in the 1800 MHz band. The dominant players are Vodafone Idea, Airtel, Geo, and BSNL, MTNL. There are many smaller players, with operations in only a few states. International roaming agreements exist between most operators and many foreign carriers. The government allowed Mobile Number Portability MNP, which enables mobile telephone users to retain their mobile telephone numbers when changing from one mobile network operator to another. Topic frequency bands Topic As of 2016, India has deployed telecom operations in a total of eight radio frequency bands. Topic subscriber base by circle Topic India is divided into 22 telecom circles. Carat asterisk population statistics are available state-wise only. Carat asterisk asterisk North East Circle includes Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, and Tripura Carat asterisk 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 West Bengal Circle includes Andaman Nicobar and Sikkim Topic Internet Topic The history of the Internet in India started with launch of services by VSNL on 15 August 1995. They were able to add about 10,000 Internet users within six months. However, for the next 10 years the Internet experience in the country remained less attractive with narrow band connections having speeds less than 56 kilobits per second dial-up. In 2004, the government formulated its broadband policy which defined broadband as an always-on Internet connection with download speed of 256 kilobits per second or above. From 2005 onward the growth of the broadband sector in the country accelerated, but remained below the growth estimates of the government and related agencies due to resource issues in last-mile access which were predominantly wired line technologies. This bottleneck was removed in 2010 when the government auctioned 3G Spectrum followed by an equally high-profile auction of 4G Spectrum that set the scene for a competitive and invigorated wireless broadband market. Now Internet access in India is provided by both public and private companies using a variety of technologies and media including dial-up PSTN, XDSL, coaxial cable, Ethernet, FTTH, ISDN, HSDPA, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, etc. at a wide range of speeds and costs. According to the Internet and Mobile Association of India IAMAI, the Internet user base in the country stood at 190 million at the end of June, 2013, which rose to 378.10 million in January 2018. Cumulative annual growth rate CAGR of broadband during the five-year period between 2005 and 2010 was about 117 percent. There were 204 Internet Service Providers ISPs offering broadband services in India as of 31 December 2017. As of January 2018, the top five ISPs in terms subscriber base were Reliance Geo 168.39 million, Bharti Airtel 75.01 million, Vodafone 54.83 million, Idea Cellular 37.33 million, and BSNL 21.81 million. In 2009, about 37% of the users access the internet from cyber cafes, 30% from an office, and 23% from home. However, the number of mobile internet users increased rapidly from 2009 on and there were about 359.80 million mobile users at the end of January 2018, with a majority using 4G mobile networks. One of the major issues facing the internet segment in India is the lower average bandwidth of broadband connections compared to that of developed countries. According to 2007 statistics, the average download speed in India hovered at about 40 kilobytes per second, 256 kilobits per second, the minimum speed set by TRI, whereas the international average was 5.6 megabits per second during the same period. In order to attend this infrastructure issue, the government declared 2007 as the year of broadband. 
To compete with international standards of defining broadband speed the Indian government has taken the aggressive step of proposing a $13 billion national broadband network to connect all cities, towns and villages with a population of more than 500 in two phases targeted for completion by 2012 and 2013. The network was supposed to provide speeds up to 10 megabits per second in 63 metropolitan areas and 4 megabits per second in an additional 352 cities. In February 2018, the average broadband speed of fixed line connection in India was 20.72 Mbps, which is less than the global average download speed of 42.71 Mbps. In terms of mobile internet speed, India performed quite poorly, with average speed of 9.01 Mbps when compared with global average mobile broadband speed was 22.16 Mbps. As of December 2017, according to Internet and Mobile Association of India, the internet penetration rate in India is one of the lowest in the world and only accounts for 35% of the population compared to the global average internet penetration is over 54.4%. Another issue is the digital divide where growth is biased in favor of urban areas. According to December 2017 statistics, internet penetration in urban India was 64.84%, whereas internet penetration in rural India is only 20.26%. Regulators have tried to boost the growth of broadband in rural areas by promoting higher investment in rural infrastructure and establishing subsidized tariffs for rural subscribers under the Universal Service Obligation Scheme of the Indian government. As of May 2014, the Internet was delivered to India mainly by nine different undersea fibres, including Simi Wi 3, Bay of Bengal Gateway and Europe India Gateway, arriving at five different landing points. Net neutrality in March 2015, the TRI released a formal consultation paper on regulatory framework for over-the-top services, seeking comments from the public. The consultation paper was criticized for being one-sided and having confusing statements. It was condemned by various politicians and Internet users. By 18 April 2015, over 800,000 emails had been sent to TRI demanding net neutrality. The TRI on 8 February 2016, notified the prohibition of discriminatory tariffs for data services regulations, 2016 which barred telecom service providers from charging differential rates for data services. The 2016 regulation, stipulates that No service provider can offer or charge discriminatory tariffs for data services on the basis of content. No service provider shall enter into any arrangement, agreement or contract, by whatever name called, with any person, natural or legal, that the effect of discriminatory tariffs for data services being offered or charged by the service provider for the purpose of evading the prohibition in this regulation. Reduced tariff for accessing or providing emergency services, or at times of public emergency has been permitted. Financial disincentives for contravention of the regulation have also been specified. TRI may review these regulations after a period of two years. Television broadcasting Television broadcasting began in India in 1959 by Doordarshan, a state-run medium of communication, and had slow expansion for more than two decades. The policy reforms of the government in the 1990s attracted private initiatives in this sector, and since then, satellite television has increasingly shaped popular culture and Indian society. However, still, only the government-owned Doordarshan has the license for terrestrial television broadcast. Private companies reach the public using satellite channels, both cable television as well as DTH has obtained a wide subscriber base in India. In 2012, India had about 148 million TV homes of which 126 million has access to cable and satellite services. Following the economic reforms in the 1990s, satellite television channels from around the world, BBC, CNN, CNBC, and other private television channels gained a foothold in the country. There are no regulations to control the ownership of satellite dish antennas and also for operating cable television systems in India, which in turn has helped for an impressive growth in the viewership. The growth in the number of satellite channels was triggered by corporate business houses such as Star TV Group and ZTV. 
Initially restricted to music and entertainment channels, viewership grew, giving rise to several channels in regional languages, especially Hindi. The main news channels available were CNN and BBC World. In the late 1990s, many current affairs and news channels sprouted, becoming immensely popular because of the alternative viewpoint they offered compared to Doordarshan. Some of the notable ones are Aj Talk run by the India Today Group and Star News, CNN Ibn, Times Now, initially run by the NDTV Group and their lead anchor, Pranoy Roy NDTV now has its own channels, NDTV 24x7, NDTV Profit and NDTV India. Over the years, Doordarshan services also have grown from a single national channel to six national and eleven regional channels. Nonetheless, it has lost the leadership in market, though it underwent many phases of modernization in order to contain tough competition from private channels. Today, television is the most penetrative media in India with industry estimates indicating that there are over 554 million TV consumers, 462 million with satellite connections, compared to other forms of mass media such as radio or Internet. Government of India has used the popularity of TV and radio among rural people for the implementation of many social programs including that of mass education. On 16 November 2006, the Government of India released the Community Radio Policy which allowed agricultural centres, educational institutions and civil society organisations to apply for community-based FM broadcasting licence. Community radio is allowed 100 watts of effective radiated power ERP with a maximum tower height of 30 meters. The license is valid for five years and one organization can only get one license, which is non-transferable and to be used for community development purposes. Radio <inaudible> <inaudible> As of June 2018, there are 328 private FM radio stations in India. Apart from the private FM radio stations, All India Radio, the national public radio broadcaster of India, runs multiple radio channels. Air service comprises 420 stations located across the country, reaching nearly 92% of the country's area and 99.19% of the total population. AIR originates programming in 23 languages and 179 dialects. <laughs> Next Generation Networks NGN. Historically, the role of telecommunication has evolved from that of plain information exchange to a multi-service field, with value-added services VAS, integrated with various discrete networks like PSTN, PLMN, Internet Backbone etc. However, with decreasing ARPU and increasing demand for VAS has become a compelling reason for the service providers to think of the convergence of these parallel networks into a single core network with service layers separated from network layer. Next generation networking is such a convergence concept which according to ITUT is, a next generation network NGN is a packet-based network which can provide services including telecommunication services and able to make use of multiple broadband, quality of service enabled transport technologies and in which service related functions are independent from underlying transport related technologies. It offers unrestricted access by users to different service providers. It supports generalized mobility which will allow consistent and ubiquitous provision of services to users. Access network, the user can connect to the IP core of NGN in various ways, most of which use the standard Internet Protocol IP. User terminals such as mobile phones, personal digital assistants PDAs, and computers can register directly on NGN core, even when they are roaming in another network or country. The only requirement is that they can use IP and session initiation protocol SIP. Fixed access e.g., digital subscriber line DSL, cable modems, Ethernet, mobile access e.g. WCDMA, CDMA 2000, GSM, GPRS and wireless access e.g. WLAN, WiMAX are all supported. Other phone systems like plain old telephone service and non-compatible VoIP systems, are supported through gateways. With the deployment of the NGN, users may subscribe to many simultaneous access providers providing telephony, internet or entertainment services. 
This may provide end users with virtually unlimited options to choose between service providers for these services in NGN environment. The hyper competition in telecom market, which was effectively caused by the introduction of Universal Access Service (UAS) license in 2003, became much tougher after 3G and 4G competitive auction. About 670,000 root kilometer mile of optical fibers has been laid in India by the major operators, including in the financially non-viable rural areas and the process continues. Keeping in mind the viability of providing services in rural areas, the Government of India also took a proactive role to promote the NGN implementation in the country. An expert committee called NGN ECO was constituted in order to deliberate on the licensing, interconnection, and quality of service QOS issues related to NGN and it submitted its report on 24 August 2007. Telecom operators found the NGN model advantageous, but huge investment requirements have prompted them to adopt a multi-phase migration and they have already started the migration process to NGN with the implementation of IP-based core network. Regulatory environment Lernasia S Telecommunications Regulatory Environment Tray Index, which summarizes stakeholders' perception on certain tray dimensions, provides insight into how conducive the environment is for further development and progress. The most recent survey was conducted in July 2008 in eight Asian countries, including Bangladesh, India, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Pakistan, Thailand, and the Philippines. The tool measured seven dimensions, I market entry, E access to scarce resources, E interconnection, I V tariff regulation, V anti-competitive practices, and V universal services, V quality of service, for the fixed, mobile and broadband sectors. The results for India, point out to the fact that the stakeholders perceive the trade to be most conducive for the mobile sector followed by fixed and then broadband. Other than for access to scarce resources the fixed sector lags behind the mobile sector. The fixed and mobile sectors have the highest scores for tariff regulation. Market entry also scores well for the mobile sector. As competition is well entrenched with most of the circles with 4 to 5 mobile service providers. The broadband sector has the lowest score in the aggregate. The low penetration of broadband of mere 3.87 against the policy objective of 9 million at the end of 2007 clearly indicates that the regulatory environment is not very conducive. In 2013, the Home Ministry stated that legislation must ensure that law enforcement agencies are empowered to intercept communications. Topic: <laughs> Revenue and growth. Topic: the adjusted gross revenue in the telecom service sector was 160,814 crore rupees, 22.4 billion dollars in 2017 as against 198,207 crore rupees, equivalent to 2 trillion rupees or 28.3 billion dollars in 2017 in 2016, registering a negative growth of 18.87%. The major contributions to this revenue are as follows in INR crores. Topic. International Topic. Nine satellite Earth stations, eight Intelsat Indian Ocean, and one in Marsat Indian Ocean region. Nine gateway exchanges operating from Mumbai, New Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Jalandhar, Kanpur, Gandhinagar, Hyderabad, and Ernakulam. Topic. Submarine cables. LOCOM linking Chennai to Penang, Malaysia India UAE cable linking Mumbai to Al Fujaira, UAE. CME WE 2 Southeast Asia Middle East Western Europe 2 CME WE 3 Southeast Asia Middle East Western Europe 3 Landing sites at Cochin and Mumbai. Capacity of 960 gigabits per second. CME WE 4 Southeast Asia Middle East Western Europe 4 Landing sites at Mumbai and Chennai. Capacity of 1.28 terabits per second. Fiber optic link around the globe flag fee with a landing site at Mumbai 2000. Initial design capacity 10 gigabits per second, upgraded in 2002 to 80 gigabits per second, upgraded to over 1 terabit per second 2005. 
TIISCS Tata Indicom India Singapore Cable System, also known as TIC Tata Indicom Cable, Chennai to Singapore. Capacity of 5.12 terabits per second. I2I, Chennai to Singapore. Capacity of 8.4 terabits per second. Seacom from Mumbai to the Mediterranean, via South Africa. It joins with CME We 4 off the west coast of Spain to carry traffic onward to London 2009. Capacity of 1.28 terabits per second. IMIWI India Middle East Western Europe with two landing sites at Mumbai 2009. Capacity of 3.84 terabits per second. EIG Europe India Gateway landing at Mumbai Q2 2010. MENA Middle East North Africa. TGN Eurasia announced landing at Mumbai due 2010 capacity of 1.28 terabits per second. TGN Gulf announced landing at Mumbai due 2011 capacity unknown. Topic C Alsa Topic Tri Indian Telecommunication Service Telecommunication Comparison Services in India Indian Telecom Spectrum Auction List of Mobile Network Operators of India List of Countries by Smartphone Penetration List of Countries by Internet Connection Speeds Topic References Topic Topic External Links Topic Telecom Regulatory Authority of India Cellular Operators Association of India Internet Usage Stats and Telecommunications of India Accounting and Reporting in Telecom Industry Mergers and Acquisitions in Indian telecom industry